More NFL survivor casualties in week 13. We'll review week 13 and get you ready for a difficult week 14 as we analyze seven key games to consider. And it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley. And we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, we had some casualties this week. We lost. Uh, we're down to six. So we've lost four. One to not put in a pick. A little bit late to not be doing that. Uh, we lost a couple to Pittsburgh uh, in that Arizona game. And we lost one to that Monday night football game. Uh, you know, what a, what a great game it was uh, that uh, Jake Browning looked pretty impressive. Uh, in Jacksonville, but Eric, some of uh, the rest of the folks that that made picks, they listened to us, or at least it looked like it. Uh, we had a pretty good week, didn't we? Exactly. You know, I mean, obviously, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to 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 say you should go with uh, the top teams, uh, Miami, and I think uh, uh, I can't remember the other big favorite. But we said if those guys are gone. You got to make a difficult decision. And we both said the Chargers, so kudos to you and me. But I want to remind people, I got more than just that correct. Uh, let's 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 run a quick footage. And then Kansas City. Now, we may have a little disagreement on this. I want to hear what you think. I'm against Kansas City this week. There's six and a half point favorites at Green Bay. If you actually have spent this long a time saving Kansas City, Save them for more lucrative matchups in week 15 through 17. Especially. Yeah, I'm less confident than you that Pittsburgh is going to win. Look here, maybe this is just a hot take. I don't think Pittsburgh is that good. Uh, seven and four, the most overrated seven and four team. I don't know, smoke and mirrors. I like the Charger defense. They have uh, they've they lead the NFL in sacks. I think they're going to make the life difficult for uh, Zappy back there, who it looks like will be the starter as opposed to Jones again. Um, and I like their defense against the run, which means that they're going to force Bryce Young to beat them in the air. And I don't know if he can. Um, so um, I do like this game. I think it's safe. The lines makers say that this is one of the best games on this plate. I just don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable I don't. I guess I don't trust Jacksonville as much as I should. On account of three, uh, who our team is going to be after Miami and Dallas? Because a lot of people will be in that boat that they've already picked Miami and Dallas. One, two, three, Chargers. Staley's Chargers. <laughs> Staley's Chargers. I'm picking Jacksonville ahead of Tampa Bay if T. Higgins is out. If T. Higgins plays. I will want to swap after. I still pick the Chargers ahead of both, but I will then move to Tampa Bay uh, over Jacksonville if T. Higgins is active for that game. So, All right, Eric, that's enough of your bragging. I, I had to, I had to get it in, Michael, because probably nothing I say this week will be correct. So I'm due to be plenty wrong on this show. Very good. Well, you know, let's let's call out those that we lost this week. We lost uh, Rick, Travis, uh, Matt, and Igor. And that, again, as I mentioned, we're down to six. That leaves Corey, William, Bert, John, Tammy, and Richard down to six. Yes, Corey, a former winner, and John Smalak, our buddy and uh, FFC correspondent. I tell you, if he makes it much longer we're gonna to have to put him on the show because uh uh it's quite a run he's made so good luck to all six remaining survivors let's see if we can help those folks out let's go through the games we think you should consider they are miami 13 point favorites at home versus tennessee and san francisco 12 and a half point favorites versus my seattle seahawks michael i think it is safe to say that if you still have Miami and San Francisco or San Francisco, go ahead and use them this week. The reason why, and I know San Francisco has uh, the Jets, they're at the Jets and at Arizona, in the, so they have some future value. But the problem is my comfort level after these top two teams drop significantly, which means that if you have one of those two, you should use them. That's my take. 
yeah, both these teams looked phenomenal and, you know, I think even tougher matchups this last week. Um, no offense to your Seattle Seahawks, but uh, they both look good right now. Um, and they're, they're riding high and, and, you know, like you say, there's a big drop off, but there's a couple games in here that I think are, are definitely worth considering. And let's face it. Most of our viewers don't have Miami or San Francisco left. All right. So the, 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 most of these teams, maybe not Baltimore, but most of the rest of the teams, I think people actually have at their disposal. So they have a really tough decision of which of these six teams uh, they want to pick. We have Baltimore, seven-point favorites over the Rams, Houston, Pittsburgh, and Green Bay, all six-point favorites over the Jets, New England, and the Giants, and New Orleans, five-and-a-half-point favorites over Carolina. Let's start at the bottom. We'll analyze the game. We won't give away whether we... Uh, it'll be our pick, but let's have a discussion. Michael, I am open. It is so close to me, these games, that there may be something you say that that uh, that that sways me. Let's start with the New Orleans Saints. You know, basically, this is the anti-Carolina strategy. Who is facing Carolina? Just pick them. And this week, uh, it, you actually get New Orleans at home against Carolina. One bit of concern I have, is there's a lot of ups and downs to Jameis Winston. He has the ability to turn it over, and you and I have talked about it over and over. When you have a close game, so many times it's based on turnovers. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, the Saints actually looked pretty good trying to come back in that game against Detroit this last week, uh, and they're at home this week. You know, Carolina uh, continues to look like they don't have what it takes offensively. Uh, and that's exactly what the Saints need right now. They are a playoff contention team, um, at least to win their division. Uh, and so they absolutely need this win. Uh, what you're talking about, I think, is the key question. Um, I still feel like the Saints are doing the right things. They're they're using Taysom Hill appropriately, which really pays big dividends, regardless of whether it's Derek Carr uh, or Jameis Winston. Um, but yeah, I mean, Derek, the, the team is geared for Derek Carr, right? Like Jameis Winston tries to push the, the ball downfield. He takes more risk. Uh, and in this game, that's exactly what you don't need. You don't need to take risk. You just need to, uh, you know, take advantage of, of the, the ability to convert with first downs with Taysom Hill and, um, you know, give the ball to Kamara and, and uh, you know, really get the ball to Olave, who looked good again this last week. So uh, I think the Saints will take care of business. But yes, a little nervous about this game if Jameis Winston is at the helm. In less than the equivalent of two full games, he's thrown three interceptions. And I saw the game. He he was lucky he didn't throw an interception this last game. He It was an ill-advised pass in, uh, in traffic. Well, they did have David Carr when they played these same Carolina Panthers. Granted, it was in Carolina in week two. And New Orleans only won by three points. The other thing to consider, if you think it's a tiebreaker situation with all these teams... Of all the teams, I think New Orleans has the highest future value, and you don't have to wait till a long time. Next week, they host the New York Giants. Yikes. That's a great game. So something to consider. Let's move on. Uh, Green Bay is six-point favorites at the New York Giants. What do you think? Man, I love this Green Bay team. All of a sudden, they are really playing to their youth. They looked very good at home uh, against Kansas City this last week, both on both sides of the ball, both defensively uh, and offensively. And they were missing Aaron Jones, which is obviously a big deal. Uh, Jordan Love is finally starting to to you know come into his own and take advantage of the weapons that they have. Uh, you know, and they, again, they are a playoff team. Um, at least they have a really good chance of making the playoffs, especially given their schedule. And here's big part of it. The only thing I can say that scares me is the fact that the game is in New York. Um, but, uh, you know, New York looked pretty bad this last, uh, week. Um, so, uh, or, or sorry, I guess they're coming off a bye, right? Yeah. Um, so there's, they were so bad this week. They didn't even get any points on the board <laughs> yeah what are you talking about the, the the giants look bad they played three straight weeks and they haven't lost they've beaten washington new england and they were off last week so in other words three yeah. buys 
<laughs> so two two weeks ago you saw their game against New England, although you saw how bad New England looked this last week against the the Chargers. Um, so uh, okay, to coming off the bye, I think that that does give you know the Giants something to uh, you know enjoy and and uh, to take advantage of. But they still aren't going to have Darren Waller back. They obviously aren't going to have Jones back, who's out for the season. Um, so I I, I think. This is a perfect matchup for Green Bay to continue this nice little streak that they have going. They look really good right now. Maybe as good as, you know, not as you know, not as good as Miami or San Francisco, but maybe as good as anyone else in the league right now. Um, and, and I think they are going to play uh, to, you know, they, they they're not taking risks in here. This is them trying to make the playoffs, which they really have a good shot towards. Okay, so you're right. They don't have Jones. They don't have Darren Waller, but they do coming off IR this week. They do have Tyrod Taylor. And I personally think Tyrod Taylor is a capable NFL quarterback and a significant upgrade over Tommy DeVito. So um, that's a cause and concern in addition to what you already said with the um, with coming off a bye. Now, they, you, they do have a very favorable schedule. Now, they don't have a slam dunk game like New Orleans does hosting the New York Giants in the future. But they do play, they host Tampa Bay and Chicago, and they're at Carolina. So not a bad, again, only in a tiebreaker. I think if you've made it this far, pick the team you're most confident with, right? But if it's a tie situation, you know, maybe you go with the tiebreaker. But I agree with how you started. This Green Bay team is playing good ball, and they're doing it without Aaron Jones. There's a chance they play Monday night that Aaron Jones will be back in this game. You'd have to follow the news and see all right so let's go on to another six point favorite how about um pittsburgh six point favorites at home against new england all right let me comment about this game in pittsburgh pittsburgh is overrated just like i said last week they're seven and five but they have far more points against uh than four um strike one Strike two, Kenny Pickett, their starting quarterback, will be likely out for this game. Strike three, there are two key players that are also maybe out. Watch the news. uh, Their offensive lineman left guard, Isaac Samalu, and very important, their linebacker, Alandon uh, Roberts, is going to be out. Now, normally... Three strikes and you're out, right? But this is not baseball. This is football. There are mitigating factors like New England's offense, which is absolutely unequivocally awful. And there's no reason to expect that it gets better. But I do want to acknowledge New England's defense. New England's defense has been so strong, Michael, especially consider their offenses has been three and out, three and out, three and out. And they have kept their last three opponents, the Colts, the Giants, and the Chargers, by an average of three of nine points, which is pretty impressive. What do you, how do you see the, uh, this? Well, let's talk about the New England team first. I mean, are they really one of the worst teams in the NFL? Are they a little better than that? Their offense is horrible. They are the worst offense in the league, uh, both uh, in terms of points scored and uh, uh, yardage uh, gained. So they they look horrible. We've already talked about how they have no big play uh, potential, and I think that they're missing Demario Douglas, which which has a, a big impact uh, as well. And they may be out with uh, without Ramondre Stevenson, which I think is huge. Um, and so they they've just went from being a really bad defense to an incapable defense, which offense. You know, offense excuse me yeah but they're they're uh the pit and the pittsburgh steelers have a you know i know you talked a lot about the chargers the pittsburgh steelers defense even with these injuries is better than the chargers defense that's one of their strengths it has been the defense maybe they don't get as many sacks as the the charges have gotten um but i think that we could see another shutout uh and the thing that pittsburgh does better than san diego this year at least has been running the ball uh, and so that's the way that they're going to uh, approach this. And as bad as Mitchell Trubisky has been in years past, uh, I think he's very good game manager. He can certainly uh, do what Pickett has done this year, which is hand the ball off and dump the ball off. Uh, and so um, I, I think this is kind of, it feels a lot like a repeat of last week. Remember we compared 
the 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 Chargers and the Steelers, and we talked how maybe the Chargers were a better team. I know that Charger game was close in terms of the score, and obviously that gave the the Patriots a chance at the very end of the game to come back, but it really wasn't close. The Chargers dominated that game. It could have been 20 to nothing uh, without some of the, the plays that New England had made and the conservatism that we saw on the part of the Chargers. And I don't think we're going to see that with the Steelers. The Steelers need to win this game. They still think they're a playoff team. Yes, they're not as good as um, some of the other potential playoff teams, uh, but I, I think they will, and this game's in Pittsburgh, right? It's not yeah. in New England. Chargers had to win in New England. It is hard to win in New England. Pitts, it's hard to win in Pittsburgh. And guess what Pittsburgh has that uh, the Chargers don't have? They've got a good coach. Uh, and he will make the difference, I think, in this game. And frankly, I just don't know that New England has anything to, to play for at this point. And so uh, I still think there's something going on with Bel- Belichick. I think we would see more changes uh, if there 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 wasn't, it'll be really interesting to see what happens to him at the end of the season. Uh, so uh, the injuries you mentioned, I think, are impactful. It makes me a little bit nervous about this game, uh, but I will be surprised if Pittsburgh doesn't take care of business this week. No, I have to say, Arizona just won in Pittsburgh, but I think Arizona is, a, believe it or not, with Connor, with uh, Murray, is a significantly better team than New England is right now. The last thing I'll say... It's the dreaded Thursday night, Michael. There's a lot that I could, I I can understand about this this week, just because Pittsburgh seems to win close games, and I have a lot of respect for head coach Mike Tomlin. But I think I think New England might be the worst team in the NFL. Again, apologies to Carolina, which has the worst record. But um, so this is definitely a game I'm considering. All right, so let's take a look at another six-point spread. Uh, Houston, six-point favorites at the New York Jets. My gosh, uh, we just talked about uh, New England's offense. Let's talk about this New York Jet offense. They've lost five straight games, scoring an average of nine points per game. Here, they simply cannot run the ball, Michael. Their running backs in uh, – well, their best running back is Brees Hall. This is what he's done in the last four games. 13 for 16 against Atlanta. That's 13 carries for 16 yards. Michael, you can fall down uh, <laughs> and almost get that. Um, against Miami, 7 for 25. When they basically were game scripted out, they'd fall behind. Uh, Buffalo, 10 carries for 23 yards. Uh, Las Vegas, 13 carries for 28 yards. Yikes. Is this New York offense as bad as I seem to be saying? It, it is. I mean, they've lost four games in a row that we they looked really, really bad. Uh, in fact, their defense really suffered because of it. And I know you got you got to factor in some of the, the defensive scores that happened in those games, but um you know they look as bad as they have all season and and really they no longer have reason to kind of hope for Aaron Rodgers to come back they're they're out right like they just won't make the playoffs at this point uh I don't think there's any possible way that could happen um so I I don't really know what's going you know through their heads um right now I mean you know they, they stayed close with that Falcons team but the Falcons um you know didn't look very good either um the Jets defense did look better, and that's my only concern. Uh, this game is in in New York. Uh, I don't know how the Jets and Giants can keep playing at home back to back like they do each week, but they 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 do this uh, every once in a while. Uh, you know, Houston um, has been has looked good, and their offense is not quite as good as the the Bills um, and the the Dolphins. But, um, you know, they can put up points and they can make it to where it's not going to be come down to the very end of the game like it was in this this Atlanta game. So um, unless unless I'm missing something about the Jets defense, um, you know, what we saw on Thanksgiving Day uh, and and separately in that game against Buffalo, um, I I, I think Houston should should be able to pull out a win. They're going to be missing Tank Dell, who's out for, I think, the season now. That's huge, um, Michael. But, That's huge. I mean, 
that's what I was, I was about to mention when you were getting that's a huge concern of mine that Tank <clears throat> Dell is out. Is it not yours? No, I mean, I, you know, he has been the he has been CJ Stroud's number one, but they have talent, right? Like, so not only do they have Noah Brown, who's back and healthy, um, which which is a big deal, uh, and and Collins, who obviously has benefited from a fantasy perspective from Tank Dow being out. Um, but there's a couple other guys that they like usage of. They're they're missing their tight end. I'm not sure if Schultz is going to be back. I think that does make an impact. But they have Damian Pierce back, and I know Damian Pierce hasn't been that effective this year, but I do, I do think he makes the team uh, all the better if they use him right. And so, um, you know, this this offensive line has looked great, and C.J. Stroud seems to be continuing to make good decisions. Uh, again, the Jets' defense has always been a little bit scary to me, and C.J. Stroud hasn't seen many defenses that good. So that's that's kind of my fear is is the rookie, you know, gonna be able to hold up against a defense as good as the Jets. So here's the thing. One huge factor to me is who is the New York Jets quarterback? Because Tim Boyle, who started the last couple of games, is not the answer unless the question is who should the Jets not start? Now, I cannot believe that I am saying this, but I believe of the quarterbacks on their roster. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I'm saying this. Zach Wilson gives them the best chance to win. With Zach Wilson, let's not forget, they have beaten Buffalo. They have beaten Philadelphia and they have beaten Denver. Three teams that I think, well, two of them, well, okay, that are as good as Houston, but let's at least say that. If 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 not, Philadelphia is obviously much better than Houston. Um, it just makes me nervous for this young Houston team without a major weapon with their wide receiver going into the New York Jets. Last gas chance. Uh, if Zach Wilson is their quarterback, we'll we'll discuss. But the last game that we have to discuss. Is Baltimore seven point favorites at home against the LA Rams? I know the Rams are real popular around your household. Michael, you must have some happy Ram fans because this team is, along with Houston, one of the biggest surprises so far. Yeah, no, the, the offense of the LA Rams is has been very, very impressive. Yeah, that's my wife's team. Uh, and, uh, you know, Matt, with Matt Stafford back and a healthy Kyron Williams, um, they're as good of an offense as, as almost anyone right now, uh, and putting up lots of points. Um, uh, Baltimore's coming off a buy, a much needed buy, by, by the way. Um, so, you know, that, that, that will be helpful to them. The game is in Baltimore. So they had that extra week to game plan and watch the Rams play two weeks in a row, which they put up big points. Um, you know, the Rams are all of a sudden in playoff contention. I don't think anybody expected that to be the case. They also have a little bit of a softer end of season schedule as well. Not quite as soft as, as Green Bay. Um, so, uh, I, I think that the, this game makes me a little bit nervous. Mark Andrews being out uh, for the rest of the season is huge for Baltimore. Isaiah likely, you know, he had one good, one or two good games last season when Andrews was out, but he's just not a good replacement for Andrews. They've had, you know, some injuries at the running back position. Obviously, they lost their 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 big star at the beginning of the season to an Achilles injury. Um, so, uh, you know, Baltimore's defense is good, but are they good enough to keep the Rams to two touchdowns? I don't think so. So this is going to be close. All right. So let's do this. We haven't discussed this. Are you okay with tell, revealing a team that, because I think these are so close, but that you're not going to pick of these, look, forget Miami and San Francisco. We go pick them if, if you're available, but of these other five games, Baltimore, Houston, Pittsburgh, Green Bay, and New Orleans, I'll start. I'm going to eliminate New Orleans. I this is the game that I have the least uh, comfort level with beyond the fact that they have a great future value the very next week. Look, if you've already used Miami and San Francisco, you have no business picking New Orleans this week because New Orleans at home against the Giants may be the next best game 
next week. So anyway, I'm out on New Orleans. Is there of these five that you like the least? I'm also out on New Orleans, but but also because of the future value. Um, and I'm also I'm out on the on the Baltimore game as well. I think the Rams look really good right now. So I would take both of those two games off of this, the table. Wow. OK, the highest uh, spread. Uh, you're out on that game. OK, so. Um, it's really difficult for me after this, Michael, because I happen to be intrigued by all four of these games. Um, oh, I, I just have to, I have to go with my gut and my gut is I don't trust Pittsburgh as much as I don't like new England. And I think that new England is one of the best teams to pick on. Um, just don't trust Pittsburgh. And it would hurt me to go down to, to, to be wrong on my pick when I knew I had doubts about this Pittsburgh uh, team. So I am going to eliminate Pittsburgh. Especially since the Thursday night, you swayed me. I'm, I, I think I'm going to eliminate them because of the Thursday night as well. Okay. So for you, it's coming down to Houston and Green Bay. Is that fair? I think and that's for right. me, I haven't, I did not eliminate Baltimore. Uh, um, for, for me, it's coming down to Baltimore, Houston, and, and Green Bay. By the way, folks, statistically speaking, of the five games that we're talking about, two of them are going to be upsets, um, statistically. Could be more than that, could be less than that, but just on a percentage basis. So this is hard stuff. Um, so am I 100% confident? Absolutely not. Um, but I would say, um, man, uh, you make a very good point about Mark Andrews. Uh, so maybe I will no longer, uh, I'll, I'll, oh, ay, ay, ay. all right, here's my final call. I'm just going to make the final call. Are you ready? Here's my final call. My pick for this week is the Houston Texans. There's a caveat. The Houston Texans, if their name starter is not um, Zach Wilson. So if they name that they're going with Tim Boyle, I want Houston. However, if they name Zach Wilson, I can't believe I'm putting my whole thing on Zach Wilson. Zach freaking Wilson. Um, if Zach Wilson is named the starter, then I would say let's, I will switch because I have less confidence in Houston winning. I will pick Green Bay against the New York Giants. There's my feel free to throw any caveat that you would have. What, what <laughs> where are you going? Well, Eric, I, I just read up because you, you, you kind of threw me off with the Tyrod Taylor comment. I just read up. And as of right now, the Giants have named DeVito to be their their starter this week, which really surprises me. <laughs> um, but that's that's who they have said is going to start this week coming out of the bye. Uh, you know, presumably because he had one game in there, he looked okay. Uh, and that makes me feel even more comfortable picking the Green Bay Packers, who've looked really good the last couple of weeks. I think they have a very well-rounded team. Uh, Love looks pretty good right now. And so I'm going to pick the Packers. I think Houston has a better chance of of blowing out the Jets than Green Bay does of the Giants um but uh you know both these games um i feel comfortable with but i think i feel better with green bay uh even though arguably uh, they both have first year starters uh because of the rookie situation and because the jets are a good defensive team the giants are not a good defensive team they're not a good offensive team green bay is a good offensive team and a good defensive team and that's enough for me to pick the packers well i disagree with you on one point the Giants are not picking DeVito as their starting quarterback because he's looked good. They're picking DeVito as their starting quarterback because I want to maximize their draft <laughs> positioning. Oh, come on! The, Tyron, oh, that is terrible. I always want you to... The only concern is, well, it, how long before they switch to Tyron Taylor? I cannot <laughs> believe that. Um, 
So yeah, I'm. I feel like I want to do research. We'll find out. I think we will find out who the Jets quarterback is early in the week. They uh, they asked Salah on Monday, and uh, he said, "I'm not telling because I guess he doesn't want Green, um, Houston to be able to to game plan." Uh, but he'll he'll name him before Sunday. So uh, maybe not before Thursday. So if you want to pick Pittsburgh. You're going to need to, you might not know that answer, but um, all right, Michael, I did a little uh, internet surfing here and apparently I'm not the only one that doesn't think Tim Boyle is the answer. The Jets have waived quarterback Tim Boyle after two starts. Oh my, not, not just benched him and they signed Brett Rippon. They're not going to start Brett Rippon in this right when they started. So they didn't name Zach Wilson. Uh, CBS News said that the Jets are leaning towards Zach Wilson. I think with Boyle out and Trevor Simeon did nothing to give the Garner confidence in. So it looks like Zach Wilson is going to be the starter. I still want to follow the news, but if Zach Wilson is the starter, and now that you tell me DeVito <laughs> could be starting against with the Giants, yeah, I'm going Green Bay along with you. Um, all right. Any final comments about this is a tough week, folks. And more than any other week, I really want to hear your guys' comments in the comment section because I want our community to be able to gain from everybody's wealth. Which of these games, don't talk to us about Miami and San Francisco, which of these other games do you feel either really confident with or you'd say there's no way in heck you would pick that that favorite. Uh, we want to hear from you. We also want to remind you that uh, you can do us a favor and smash that like button, uh, share your comments in the comment section, and hit the red subscriber button, followed by the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Any final comments, Michael? No, I think uh, we're off. We're, let's continue to create, uh, enjoy this crazy NFL. <laughs> yes. We are going to continue to give you this coverage until at least all of our poll is done. So we will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll put up two videos we think that you'll enjoy.